with one of our all-time favorite guests, Gerald Chalente, founder of the Trends Journal. Gerald, I hate when it's not in person, but I'll have to accept <laughs> this chat via internet for now. Uh, it's always great being on with you. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, well, you're smiling. Well, I'm smiling because I see you. <laughs> Uh, well, I was happy to have you on because, you know, every once in a while we need to have a touch base. And here we are speaking post-presidential debate. And of course, just want to get your thoughts on the state of things. How are you feeling after uh, everything that's unfolded this past week? You go back to our Trends Journal covers. A week before the election, the cover was America falling down. And we had Trump falling, a uh, Biden rather, the guy drew pictures of him falling all over the place. And then two days before the debate, the cover of the Trends Journal magazine was presidential reality show, the great debate. And we had Daffy Duck versus Goofy. All mm -hmm. right. And that's what it is. Hey, who has a better golf score? I mean, it was a, it's a joke. It's the decline of America in front of everybody's eyes. It's so sad that this is the best that America has to offer. So anyway, that's the way we see it. And it's... Uh, well, yeah, I think a lot of Americans watch that frustrated and, you know, just frustrated. I can't tell you, and I, I'm sure you receive so many emails of folks who are just struggling to make it, Gerald, in this economy. And yet, you know, we, we are focusing so much on, you know, the Biden and, you know, his whether he has dementia or not. And we're, we're really not talking about, and not that that's not an important issue, the health of the president, but we're losing focus on economy, on the debt that America's on. Like, we're not talking about issues that need to be faced here. Am I wrong? No, you're 100% right. Look, the, you look at the data. Well, sixty-three percent of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. An article just came out, you know, just recently um, about the the housing issues. Yes, you got the price of homes went up since the COVID war began, forty-seven percent. Forty-seven percent. Then you look at at the the numbers here. And this is according to um, Redfin or ATOM, A-T-T-O-M, examined 572 U.S. counties and determined that median price homes in about 80 percent of those areas are out of reach for the average in income earner. I mean, it's right there. Major home expenses on typical homes sold during the second quarter required an annual income of $90,598. So, so $91,000, and you're looking at the average income of um, $71,000. Again, and then you look at inflation. When I was a young guy, man, I mean, one of my first real jobs, I was making $31,000, and that was good money. Yeah. And I said, no, the whole thing has gone down. And, you, and again, you want to look at the presidential reality show? How about all the inflation that these two clown boys created with Trump? You know, the, what, what did the, the deficit went up like $4 trillion under him, or 3 or $4 trillion under Biden, dumping all this free money in to fight the COVID war? Stay in your house. Close down your business. Here's cheap money. Bring those interest rates down to zero. Can't understand why we got inflation. Can't figure it out. And it doesn't go away, the inflation numbers. Oh, the inflation numbers are coming in lower than... I just said housing prices are up 47%. Exactly. exactly. Well, that's why I, I, I laugh when, you know, watching uh, Fed Powell speak yesterday, you know, saying, hey, he likes what he's seeing on the inflation front. And I'm thinking there's such a disconnect to your point about housing, cars not moving off lots. Uh, credit card debt at all time high. Americans using debt to, to to get a trip to Disneyland for their kids. There's such a disconnect with what American everyday Americans are facing, 
And to your point about the debt, just some numbers here, we're at 2 trillion in annual deficits and 100 trillion of baseline deficits, Gerald, projected 2050. How do we get off this trajectory? It's not going to. It's going to be the crash of the dollar at some point. America's gone the way of the country that we fought against back in the revolution, uh, Great Britain. Sun never sets on the British Empire. We fight wars all over the world. Oh, yeah, then you had World War I and you, the pound went dead because you kept fighting these wars. The same things happened to America. The trillions and trillions of dollars going to fight wars as the country's rotting in front of our eyes. I mean, you live in New York City. I went down to the city uh, uh, two weeks ago. I used to live down in West Village. The West Village is one of the hottest spots around. Now I see guys like this all drugged out, watching guys shoot up. Everywhere where, where, there's, uh, where they're doing construction and they have their scaffolding over there, scaffolding, all underneath it, all homeless people. Oh, yeah. Roads are rotted in front of us. The, the, how, about, how about the train system in America? Isn't it great? The New York subways are not in Calcutta. Amtrak is crap track when you go around the world and you see the high-speed rail. The country is rotting in front of everybody's eyes. And if you're too deaf to see it, all you had to do was turn on the presidential reality show and see the clown show that we had called a debate. These are the people running the country. They're, they're out of control morons and imbeciles that have destroyed what used to be the land of opportunity. Oh, how about how about the the vanguards and the and the Black Rocks and the um, and 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 the State Streets that own what? Uh, together, the largest shareholders of forty percent of all U.S. companies and eighty-eight percent of the S and P five hundred. That's according to uh, a study done that was reported in Business Insider. Once upon a time, this used to be the land of opportunity. Oh, you want to talk about the equity markets? The gang is running it in front of everybody's eyes. What land of opportunity? Actually, Tulsi Gubbard uh, kind of, I, I thought of you. She was doing an interview and this was her quote. She said, does anyone really believe after seeing the debate that Biden is in charge? The real power lies with the deep state, intel agencies and propaganda media who got him elected in the first place. I mean, I was I was um, I don't know if you caught that interview, but I mm. thought, wow, at least she's she's saying it out loud. Yeah, again, we, we've been saying this for years. There's nothing new about it. the media is dead. Oh, talking about Great Britain. Look who's running CNN, the Cartoon News Network. Oh, they brought somebody over from the UK. Oh, who's running Bloomberg now? Oh, somebody from the UK. Who's running the Washington Post? Oh, somebody from the UK. Who's running the Daily Call? Oh, somebody from the UK. There's no media anymore. Again, that little slime ball, every time he got caught with his pants down, bombs away over Baghdad, Bill Clinton. Yeah, he did away with the Federal, Communica the Federal Communications Act, 19 1996. Did away with all the restrictions, and now you got six companies controlling 92% of the media.